Hey there, ninjas. We're going to talk about the foods you most need to keep an eye on when it comes to pathogen contamination and pathogen growth. And it kind of includes everything, but there are certain foods that are way more susceptible to pathogen growth. And we're going to talk about what those foods are and why. So in the food industry, we have a term we use called TCS foods, and TCS stands for time and temperature controlled for safety. Basically what it means is that TCS foods need to be kept in very clearly controlled time and temperature situations because they are super pathogen prone. And basically what that means is that TCS foods are foods that pathogens just love due to their protein, carbohydrate, and moisture content. So if you have a TCS food, it's way more likely to grow bacteria quickly than a non-TCS food. And we'll go over what those foods are in a few minutes. So what do I mean by time and temperature? Basically, if a TCS food spends too much time in the wrong temperature range, AKA the danger zone, bacteria will reproduce like bunnies in the springtime. Like they go crazy. They can, like I said earlier, they can double in as quickly as 20 minutes. And then that new number doubles and that new number doubles and it gets out of hand pretty quickly. So here is the temperature danger zone. The longer a food stays in the danger zone, the more bacteria will grow. So the wider danger zone is 41 degrees Fahrenheit, also five degrees Celsius to 135 degrees Fahrenheit or 57 degrees Celsius. Now, bacteria grow pretty quickly in this range, but then there's peak danger zone, which is kind of like room temperature, right? On a nice warm day. So that goes from 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius to 125 degrees Fahrenheit to 52 degrees Celsius. Now that's actually like, this is a temperature that can vary easily be hit in the average home kitchen. And this is why it's really bad when you leave food out at room temperature for too long. Like if food is anywhere in this range of 41 degrees to 135 degrees, bacteria will grow quickly. Now if food is left in the range of 70 degrees to 125 degrees, it bacteria just grows exponentially faster. These temperatures, 70 to 125, are like peak spa time for bacteria and bac and viruses. They're like, this is awesome. This is the perfect temperature for us. We're going to have a party. We're all going to have a couple drinks. And then we're going to make millions of other bacteria. It's seriously a problem. So these are the two zones that you want to keep an eye out for. And the red zone, the peak danger zone, is the most important danger zone that you need to keep an eye on. Okay, so what are the TCS foods? Again, TCS foods are foods that are especially sensitive to time and temperature abuse. And time and temperature abuse is basically industry parlance for being kept at the wrong temperature for too long. Now, at the top of this list are eggs, and that includes hard boiled eggs and mayonnaise. And when I say mayonnaise is included, that includes anything with mayonnaise in it, okay? We're talking egg salad, potato salad, potato salad sandwich, like, Anything with mayonnaise in it is highly susceptible to spoilage and highly susceptible to pathogen growth. That's why I actually have eggs here in the photo off to the side on the slide because I really wanted to articulate that eggs are probably the food you need to keep an eye on the most. You also have dairy products like cheese and yogurt. Not such a huge deal, but they become a problem when left out at room temperature for an extended amount of time. If you don't have a specific reason for leaving them out, like you're making your own yogurt or you're making your own crumb fresh, but that is a whole other training. Meat such as red meat, poultry, fish, and shellfish. We all, I think, know that meat should not be left out at room temperature, like in our heads, but we do it all the time. People leave food out on the counter, like they'll take a steak out of the freezer and they'll leave it on the counter and forget about it. And it'll sit on the counter or in the sink for like eight hours. And then people wonder, oh, should I eat it? Should I throw it away? You cannot eat it at that point. You do not want to defrost food at room temperature, especially meats, but we will go into that in another slide in another lesson. But for now, just know that meats are one of the things you keep, need to keep an eye on. Cooked starches are a big one, like baked potatoes and rice. Baked potatoes are actually surprisingly problematic because they're very starchy. So if you are ever at like a football game and you guys are tailgating and you see somebody who's selling like uh, baked potatoes that have been cooked ahead of time, wrapped in foil, and they're like giving them out of the back of their truck, do not eat them. Like baked potatoes wrapped in foil and held at that like weird danger zone temperature are highly, highly, highly susceptible to spoilage and bacterial growth. And you can get some really nasty bugs that way. Cooked plant-based foods like veggies and beans, 
Soy, including soy milk, tofu, soybeans, and TVP. And trust me, when soy goes off, you will know it. I had a friend of mine who left a cup of soy milk sitting in his room over the weekend while he went out of town. And when he came back, it smelled like something died. It was awful. Cut fresh fruit like sliced melons. Berries are another big one. Cut fresh vegetables like chopped cucumbers. Uh, Cut fresh greens and sprouts. Sprouts are actually a really easily contaminated food. Uh, It's why you're starting to see them less in restaurants. Like a lot of restaurants are just like, yeah, I'm not going to carry sprouts anymore because they're a highly contaminated food. The truth is that you can get food poisoning from almost anything. But let the fact that you rarely get sick from eating contaminated food alleviate some of your fears. Seriously, think about it. How often do you get food poisoning? Hopefully, it's not very often. This just goes to point out that foods, for the most part, are safe. So don't let this scare you into not cooking. Like, even though almost any food can be contaminated, it's actually really easy to keep yourself safe. So let's get to the next lesson.